Well, the only time I can say there was anything any really scary was uh, back on the Shovelman Bridge. Went for a little swim unexpectedly, messed up a, a, a new phone, and uh, didn't know if I'd make it back to the bank, but I did. <laughs> all wet, all dripping wet, but that was that was the scariest thing. But as far as funny goes, working on the Ben Bacon Bridge uh, is when we come up with the name, uh, when Jerry uh, kind of coined the word Shovelman. For our group is uh we were working on a project and he says hey i'm just a shovelman and so that kind of is one of those things that was just kind of funny and i just kind of looked at reinhardt and i said well what's that all about and he just kind of looked at me and smiled well <laughs> and so that's kind of where that all started 2009 brought the beaver creek bridge it's a covered bridge uh, 2011 we built the ben biking bridge it's an open trestle bridge and the place where the term shovelman was coined, and also where Kerry joined our group of formerly three and now four. The Point Covered Bridge is the third bridge. It broke ground in 12 and was dedicated in 13. Something was rather serious at the time, but it's really funny now, uh, as far as the credits go, it, it was the four shovelmen plus one who built it, <laughs> and Al was the plus one. The fourth bridge was built Shortly afterwards, uh, the Mary Morrow Bridge, also a covered bridge, a very traditional town lattice structure, uh, started in uh, 13, in the fall of 13, after the Point Bridge was finished in the spring of 13, and dedicated in May of 14. And in uh, the end of 15, in December of 15, we broke ground on the what would become the Five Shovelman Bridge, an Amundsen project. I'd say up to at least this bridge, the most ambitious project <clears throat> up to that point. Uh, it's a suspension bridge. It spans 80 feet across the Lacrosse River and has a ramp that's considerably longer than the bridge at about 130 feet, uh, taking you from the flood level up to the height of the bridge. Uh, it was dedicated in September of 16, and uh, then in 20, during COVID, we built the Lovelock Bridge, which was a replacement of an existing bridge that the city had built uh, at the beginning of this, this era of bridge building. And the city immediately placed ramps at the base of the bridge because you couldn't get up the first part, hardly. And uh, that influenced heavily the geometry of the current Lovelock Bridge uh, with its two very graceful arches that come together. And... Uh, I think it's a wonderful expression of keeping the geometry intact and the location obviously stayed the same uh, with something a little bit more graceful. And now this one we're standing on, named the Child Center Bridge. Started on uh, April 17th of 23 and it's due to dedicate on the 22nd of August. Uh, the Sparta Kiwanis uh, kind of brought the naming over a tipping point by contributing $10,000 towards the project uh, if uh, the bridge would have a child-centered name uh, applied to it and uh, other influences from people that are old enough remembering the child center or playing on the former bridge here or knowing that there was a hayfield back here that served the child center uh, brought a certain sense of seriousness to the naming contest from th something that was a little bit more maybe fun of what to call this thing. And I think it's very appropriate because the Child Center was a big piece of Sparta history from, I think, 1885 to 1976. And, uh, you know, was the orphanage in, in the state of Wisconsin. So that's a, that's a big deal. That played a major role in a lot of people's lives. This one has been uniquely challenging. We've got some concrete work that we've never attempted before. This slab here that's... It's not terribly large, but it weighs more than the entire bridge at uh, 32,000 pounds. Uh, you know, something we'd never did before. Uh, Jerry was careful to make sure that uh, everything was perfectly braced. And uh, while I'm typically pretty conservative with those things, Jerry is more so. And uh, he prides himself at the uh, concrete and the concrete finishing and I, I think everything turned out really well. You know, happiness is no accident and uh, no heroes were made on any collapse. Well, when I retired, I figured 
if you don't get up and do something every once in a while, you're not going to be around very long. So this gets me out of the house. I mentioned to Al this morning, we were putting rock on and one rock didn't fit very well. And I says, I'd rather pour concrete. It, it's hard work, but I like the concrete part. Well, it's going to be something here that's going to be for many, many years. And there isn't a whole lot of things that are built that last that's as, hopefully as long as this is. And it, it's got something to do with the family, too. You know, the, they get down in here and they, well, they call it the bridges, Papa's Bridges. So that's, it makes a guy feel good to hear that, you know. All the bridges that we've done, I, I did go for a swim this year off off the bridge. Uh, I lost a fingernail and other than a couple bumps or bruises, we've all been fairly lucky, you know, on, on that point. We, we're, we're, we're fairly That's careful, good. you know. So it's, and we're safety minded, you know, so. Well, I think I'd have to go back to start with the first project, which was the one room schoolhouse that Reinhardt was uh, renovating for my wife, who was a, very much involved with the historical society. She introduced me to him and I uh, liked what he was doing. And I figured this was one of the things to get me out of the house because I was retired at the time and realized the same thing that those guys were talking about, that you can't sit around idle all your life, so you gotta keep moving along. So that's why I'm still here. At least I know this is might be the last bridge. I don't know. This is basically the first one on this end of the town, so we've got one at the far end of the town, so there isn't much room in between anymore. So. Everybody says, where's the next one? I thought, <laughs> we're, we're not too sure. So Reinhardt gets a design together and it's it all fits and it works really well. It's uh, amazing how he can pull out his phone and calculate this, <laughs> gets it all to work and it's pretty cool. And I, like Jerry said, I, you know, we like to stay busy. So it keeps you somewhat young, I guess. <laughs> I used to drive by and give them a little words of uh, encouragement, but, but when I retired, then I jumped right in there, so been there ever since. Yeah, it's it's been a fun ride. When the man landed on the moon, I remember that. I know the rest of the shovel men are old enough to remember that. Uh, you know, what did that really do for our individual lives, wherever we were living and whatever our parents do, were doing for a living? Probably not very much but it gave us a sense of national pride. You know, that's what this does for us here in our community. And that's where it really matters. Because what goes on in Russia, what goes on in the Middle East, what goes on in Washington, D.C., we can't influence that, but we can influence this here. And I see it now. There's people that have a different gait in their step that enjoy things like the farmer's market. And, you know, people like Jennifer that have a booth at the market and enjoy that and are able to apply what they like to do. You know, I don't necessarily see myself uh, brewing up all the potions that she does for sale, but she enjoys it very much. And the people that visit her enjoy it very much. And it creates a dynamic in the community that's very healthy. Just like my space shuttle example, you know, why is a bridge over a river become a destination. It really doesn't serve the people in the river very much, except for this one. They can now go under it. But all the other ones, I mean, really, what does it do? But for some reason, these bridges are bright, shiny objects in people's minds. They jog to them. They canoe under them. They walk to them. They want to see them. They bicycle over all these different things. So it's integrated with people's lives. It gives them a place to go. But uh, also, we found that some of these concepts that we've championed, whether it be the Chris Kindle market, the farmer's market, whatever, they've they certainly got a shot in the arm through the buildings that we as shovelmen constructed. But it didn't like happen overnight. It takes time. It takes years for people to recognize that it's there, that it's kind of cool, that they can go there, that no one's going to bite you, you know, whatever their fears are. I'm obviously much more enthusiastic. I want to try things out right away. But one of the concepts that's been brewing for a long time with the Chamber of Commerce is this idea of pedal paddle fish. 
we've been marketing ourselves as a pedal place forever, right? Uh, those people are isolated to a, a segment of the year. Uh, not everybody likes to do that. They like to do other things. Or maybe they're super athletes and want to do it all. Um, you need to promote other things for them to do to hang around here longer than just an afternoon. So this is a great piece of cementing that idea in people's heads that this pedaling and paddling and fishing all go well together. And we have it all here in Sparta. We should exploit it. So uh, I'm glad we had the opportunity to do this. And, you know, I think we've really reached the point of having some momentum and some respect. And I, it's, again, it's not why we did this. We did this for the camaraderie and because we enjoy construction. And I often tell people it's, you know, somebody else paying for my habit. I mean, if I were to build this in my yard, I have to take, or I have to mortgage my house. And here I just get to play with the materials and, and explore and create and see it happen. And I really don't need one of these in my yard. <laughs> You're gonna have to buy some chalk where you... How old am I? Closer to 88 than I am 87. <laughs> These guys aren't even to the age that I was when I started here. Well, I think the shovelmen, well, if we're here or not, I think they'll all be together sure. uh, in one way or the other. And I feel confident that we'll still be around the shovelmen. There'll be new ones stepping in our places, but I, I've been thinking that maybe we would get some guys that would volunteer to dedicate the summer to just doing simple maintenance around the structures because they do need it. Well, no doubt Reinhardt will find something down the line someplace. I think he's got something planned with some smaller buildings and stuff like that. And if uh, needs the help, I guess we'll jump in in there and give him a hand. It's been a labor, but a labor of love. Uh, Sparta's my home. And uh, everything that we've done, everything that we've uh, been involved in as, as a group, it's just been a joy to be a part of.